Really, the monster in Monster Hunter is capitalism. It got on in a flag. They played the mash. They played the monster mash. I'm Luke Summerhays. I'm James J. Miles. I'm Andrew Rice. I'm James the Jasper Stewart. And I'm Joe Screbbles. And you're listening to Monster Mash. And this week's episode, we're not hunting anything at all for a change. But we're actually going to be talking about the men, the hunters, of, and the women, of Monster Hunter. And uh, how they affect the world. The greatest monster of all. I would normally read out an excerpt here, but there isn't one. Well, I had a look on the uh, the Monster Hunter wiki, and there's some really weird, like, s- sort of elements to the, to the hunters, which I th- thought was interesting. Like... It says that hunters, and I assume this means all of them, are estimated to be 175 centimetres tall. (laughs) (laughs) Every single one. Uh, Which implies, I don't know, cloning? It's horrible. Um, I mean, mean, that's fair. I've I've never seen anyone with a different height. It's true. There's no height slider when you you make your hunter, is there? That is true. There's there's also a whole section called What Are Their Reasons for Hunting? And my (laughs) favourite bit is... Some even become hunters to sneak out of crimes they've done. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, there's, wow. there's no citation here, but the idea that, I don't know, like you're playing as an embezzler is <laughs> very strange yeah, to I me. I was say, like, this is surely like, made up. Yeah, Have they confused maybe. the Hunter's Guild with the Night's Watch? <laughs> I was about to say, they're very similar, aren't they? We've got a very love-hate relationship with the Monster Hunter Wiki here on this cast because we have found the... There is a lot of bullshit there. Just obviously. you, Jay. Just you. In the last well, okay, few let, episodes I, where you're throwing shade on them for like <laughs> no reason at all. There is reason. They make up things about hunters being murderers. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do often find that I'm reading actual in-game facts about monsters, and then it just feels like they've written some fan fiction to go with it. <laughs> That's like kind of uh, sort of like the bottom of Magic the Gathering cards. Like if you can be asked by the end, it's just got like a little made up story for you. The the only one of those I know is scavengers are always the first to pay their respects. <laughs> because That's... that was a magic card that we found on the playground at school. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> right, should we talk about the thing <laughs> yeah let's actually move on to the car <laughs> shall we so monster hunters are as it says on the tin people who hunt monsters but i think the interesting part of that is that when they say monsters they never mean they don't mean dracula and they don't mean hitler they just mean <laughs> big animals yeah pretty much well so yeah I mean, you've got your your elder dragons and stuff, but I suppose we'll come to that later. But in general, it is just the animals that inhabit the world, both dangerous and docile, really, isn't it? That's it. We haven't actually seen a vampire or Hitler. So <laughs> you don't know if they're in the world. <laughs> we don't know if they'll turn it down. <laughs> just a Hitler ass in Monster Hunter World turns up. <laughs> you need to get the H rank for that. <laughs> Mussolini off. <laughs> we would be him. Stouts. Stalinos, they all end in Austin, don't they? So, I was just go. thinking like Stalin Nactor. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Andy. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, um, so every quest, there is like a reason to hunt the monster. Like ranging from the, you know, everyone is in danger to some really dumb ones. Like, I want you to bring it home so I can fight it. <laughs> <laughs> the best ones. I, I was going to say, this is sort of the the horror of hunters isn't it that they're just like really the monster in monster hunter is capitalism because (laughs) these people are just driven by the need for more and more things and more and more money and they don't care why they're killing creatures because yeah when you look at some of them it's just like this monster likes honey that i want and that's it and you (laughs) murder the thing and take all its limbs off just like Click the Narnia for itself, and then the yeah. horror comes along and just slices it up. Well, I at least can say that I've never killed an Azurus. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, like, once you get to late game in Monster Hunter, you're quite right, you just don't read the descriptions. You just, right, bash up a quest. What, what's the monster? Uh, Raffalos, let's go, let's go. You don't care. It could be somebody's wanting to 
kill it to capture it in a dungeon and study it or whatever. You don't care at the end of the day, it's there to kill it. I think that's what they do with the ones you capture anyway, or, or they just throw them in the arena for like sports combat. Well, there's all that. The, the horrible implication of when you capture things and you get more parts out of them, it's just that they're more <laughs> easily vivisected at home than they are in the field. They're killed quietly in their sleep and sliced up, yeah. yeah. So in the opening for one of the Monster Hunter games, I think it's actually Monster Hunter 2, they actually show the hunters in that quest capturing a raffian and there's a transition in the opening scene where they're carting the raffian away all strapped to this um the like one of the buggies that the the, the felines carry and then the next scene is like a blacksmith like picking scales off its height so they're very <laughs> completely saying that yes they are picked and brutally vivisected <laughs> the game tries very hard to not make it seem like Hunters are evil capitalists. It goes on about the guild, and then with the guild, you've got all the stuff about how it's harmony with nature and things, and they sort of keep the numbers down by stopping poaching and things like that. Wait, but... they stop poaching by killing the animals before the poachers get to them? <laughs> Is that the implication? You have to have permission from the guild to hunt a monster, and like a couple of the weapon descriptions say that if people poke without permission, the guild kill them. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a couple of swords which are described as being used by like Hunters Guild assassins. Oh my god! I'm looking forward to that oh, spin off. That sounds please. fantastic. <laughs> well, you also get like the higher up who are like people of the guild who are like not hunters, but like they're there to kind of protect either villages or like part of a kingdom. Hmm. So like maybe those are those are the ones they send out to kind of just like general knights of the Monster Hunter universe to kill the people who poach. Oh man, that game could be called Hunter Monster. That would be really good. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> but as soon as you're actually playing the game, like, yeah, you do the quest once to save the village, but then you do it 30 more times to kill enough of them to, like, make some shoes. But they're still attacking the village, right? So, you know, it's just a village that's in constant danger. Maybe they I mean, build if, it somewhere better. I was about to say, if the village is just getting a Rathian, like, six times a night, maybe don't live there. <laughs> Oh no, the Shagarumagala's back oh, again. <sighs> well, we talked about that in the Shagarumagala episode, in that, in theory, like I must have been hunting for ten thousand years yeah, to have yeah. finished that armor. Yeah, with the Shagarum eclipse. The was it Magala eclipse? Was it? Mm. Yeah. You brought up the. Hunter's Guild um, reflecting like harmony and prosperity. Do you want to talk a little more about that? Uh, yeah, there was. A... Well, I mean, I'm pretty much ripping all of this off from Gaijin Hunter. <laughs> that's the whole. That's the whole that's podcast, the mate. <laughs> In fairness, he just pulled it all from a Japanese magazine, so I think I can be forgiven. But the Hunter's Guild symbol has got like four prongs, which represent, in turn, um, respect for nature, taking prosperity from nature crafting from nature and living as a community and the director said it represents respect for nature which comes and gives us the seeds of life which we use to live as a community the symbol reflects how we live together with nature i just try to justify their barbarism there to be totally honest definitely yeah i mean i'm gonna bring up a point that i made ages ago and thought was clever and have been waiting to reuse but <laughs> The weird thing I always found is that Monster Hunter and The Witcher are basically about the same thing. But one of them presents The Witcher as someone everyone hates and as sort of a monster. Whereas in Monster Hunter, everyone loves the hunter and you're like the hero of the village and an absolute good guy. And I think it just all comes from the Japanese philosophy of like they do have a lot of respect for nature and living in harmony with it. But then also, they're the guys who keep killing whales. <laughs> Talking about how it is a very Japanese thing um, to sort of have this harmony with nature and to, you know, their whole philosophy, Shintoism and everything is all about that living in harmony with nature and taking only what you need. But then in modern times, that sort of isn't true anymore because the rest of the world has made like a lot more strides towards stopping hunting endangered creatures than Japan has. Yeah, very true. I mean, you saw the whole furore with um, the the lion that that dentist hunted in the US. 
It's a big game hunt and it's pretty pretty heavily frowned upon in this day and age. Yeah, I mean, because you do, you can buy those games, the Cabela Hunter ones, which are about like real life big game hunting. Aren't they shit though? <laughs> yeah, but then I always think the difference is like, at least in Monster Hunter, I'm getting up in the monster's face and fighting it. Like, there's a chance it can kill me. Whereas if I'm like sniping a lion from a mile away, <laughs> I'm not quite sure that's going to be fun. You're saying then that you want big Cabela game hunting games like to add in like charge blades and insect glaives, so you, you can get up close and personal with a lion. Or well, wants... no, but even then, like I mean, like take. Hunting doesn't have to be that sort of sniping style of thing. Like uh, one of my favourite uh, mini games, uh, going back to Japanese style hunting, would be uh, in Yakuza Five, where you get to hunt lots of deer and you use all the sort of deer meat to, to feed the village and stuff. And that's still using guns, and you're still you know doing it in that more respectful style. Hmm. I mean, yeah, there probably is an argument that in Monster Hunter you are, you know, because you do kill them to make meat, and presumably hunters are what keeps the village fed as well. Yeah, I don't get the impression. Vegetarians really taken off in the Monster Hunter world. Well, <laughs> oh, they've got big mushroom farms. They'll be fine. <laughs> lots of lots of cheese as well. You know. Ah, true. You get your um, what the muffas? M- muffas, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Make milk and cheese. Well, out of that. The muffas do they? Just use no, making milk and cheese of them. All oh, right, fair, fair, yeah. Just thought you said they were you were cutting them up. <laughs> they might be as well. Muffas, man, they've not done anything wrong. T- taste a bit of mutton. Why not? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, there is the argument that even if it is pretty immoral to do the hunting in Monster Hunter, at least you're doing it in a game. (laughs) Is that not the argument people use when they shoot lots of people in Call of Duty or something? And it's like, you know, it's not real. I mean, (laughs) it's harder. I, I would argue that, and bear with me here, murder is easier than going out and killing an elephant. Now, I mean, that does. No, I don't, don't think it's better with you. That sounds pretty fair. But, I know, but it sounds almost like I'm saying something controversial without saying anything controversial. <laughs> like, I don't know why I do that sounds sort of bad. see what you mean. <laughs> so, what yeah, I'm saying cause... is that Monster Hunter should be banned. That's the problem. <laughs> well, it's That's funny that. you say that because before I got into Monster Hunter, my little brother did. Hmm. And my dad stopped him playing it because of how aggressive it was making him. <laughs> oh my god! But I think that's probably got less to do with sort of the violent themes, and more to do that it's a very difficult, impenetrable game when you're like a twelve-year-old child. I don't know how to get a Kelby horn. <laughs> 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 I mean, I had to get you three to talk me through how to learn how to play Monster Hunter. Let Has alone... anyone ever learned to play Monster Hunter without someone else teaching them? But, yeah, the only problem is that everyone has to sort of half teach themselves how to use the ridiculous <laughs> multiplayer system to help <laughs> be helped by anyone. That has gotten a bit better, but I remember in like Monster Hunter 3, we we played it a hundred times, I never quite learned how to do it without someone talking <laughs> me through on Skype. Well, that's it. I mean, go go back to Monster Hunter Tribe. We were all trying to set up We Speak at the same time. Oh, good <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> <laughs> There was just like way too many menus in Monster Hunter Tribe, wasn't there? Like, to kind of create a lobby. And then you could name it, and like, there's a whole lot of stuff. The process is just awful. <laughs> Should be easier with World of Hope. I'm not. Uh, see, this is. I'm not completely. Like, <laughs> I don't fully understand. And I've had it actually described to me by the guy making the game how multiplayer will work anyway. Because you're firing a flare into the air, and then it's meant to ping people in the world who are just sitting around waiting to be told to join a game late? No, I think they may, be on, their, they may be on their own on, or maybe just like just finishing. See, oh, and then when you, put up, you fire up like the flare, like it can basically it sends out an SOS to anyone who's playing a game. Like So it's just like invading in Dark Souls or something? I was yeah, about to say, that does yeah. sound like Dark Souls summons. I was going to say, is this going to be worse than Splatoon 2's like, multiplayer system? Because if so... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I mean, the only thing that's if it is combining Dark Souls esque multiplayer into it, does that mean you're not going to have the separate single and multiplayer hunts anymore? Uh, yeah, there definitely isn't single and multiplayer hunts. There's just one Ooh. one yeah. set of things now. Hmm. Because obviously, in the current games, it does scale the difficulty of a monster when you have mates. Yeah. 
So if that's gone, it's going to feel even more like just four of you picking on something. <laughs> I, I, I assume it must still scale it. I mean, like, Dark Souls still scales when you've got an extra person, right? So it must surely still just do that. Uh, but if you're calling them in halfway through a hunt... I suppose, yeah, I mean, halfway through. Presumably, they are much smarter at doing this sort of thing than me, so maybe they can sort it out. Yeah, and there's obviously going to be more monsters to fight within a quest anyway, because like, yeah. in the more open, seamless world, like you've not just got like one monster to deal with. Like whereas now, you hunt the one monster and that's it. Nothing. Occasionally, one will show up, mm. like a second random, but never more than three at a time. Imagine like a, a random joins your joins your team and the Rathalos just grows by two times in front of you. <laughs> just inflates. And that's how it, <laughs> that's how it scales. I like, yeah, so like, like, like a Zamtrios. Exactly. Like, with everything. <laughs> or it does like the opposite, like those special event quests where if someone disconnects from a match, the monster just shrinks in size. <laughs> I'd be well up for that. Brilliant. You start with four players, but by the end it's just one guy fighting a horse-sized Rathalos. <laughs> <laughs> Cause they got the cages, they got the boxes And guns, they are the hunters, we are the foxes And we run I mean, I think, going back to the whole reason about the hunters the hunting monsters and it feeling a bit shit I think because the monsters and monsters are, are so ridiculous You get your monsters like your Zamtrios You never really feel that bad, like hunting a big inflated balloon shark and things like that I feel bad hunting almost everything in that game. There's always a point where it, you know, something happens and you just feel awful about it. Just like I... it starts drooling. It's when it starts limping, <laughs> yeah. Whenever yeah. I get a proper look at one of them limping, I do feel pretty bad. It's like the Sif effect in Dark Souls, isn't it? Oh, yeah. But the see, with Sif, it was so deliberate. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. But, like... Do they want me you to feel they bad in Monster Hunter? Have you ever got the Duramboros? Like, just because he's just happy spinning, like, all day. So, like, when you kill him and then he kills over, you're just like, oh, what should I have done that now? Can't take but, it back, But everything else, I'm like, I'm fine with killing. You did that. Game. That Duramboros probably Especially had a family. Especially Arzuros. Arzuros is need to die. I suppose... No, fuck you. But I suppose <laughs> what I need to think... <laughs> like... Obviously, I feel bad about shooting bears in the year 2017. But if we lived 500 years ago, and sometimes bears just walked into the village and gored people, like, I might still not like the idea of killing an animal, but I'd understand that it needs to be done. Yeah. And, like, the monsters in Monster Hunter, if you look at, like, the ruins everywhere, they clearly can fuck shit up. That's true. I'd never really thought about the fact that there are just ruins everywhere. <laughs> just yeah, there thousands were, like, of people. That there was like much bigger civilizations, but like all oh, these monsters are just kind of moved in and killed everybody. Just a mountain of bones. <laughs> how we were talking about how the wiki seems to just make things up. Hmm. There's this one page from like the Monster Hunter illustrations book, which is in the section labelled like unused assets. But where they talk about like an an old zombie dragon that was created in ancient times to kill dragons. What? But people go on and on and on about that, like it is definitely the story of why Monster Hunter exists. Because <laughs> it says something like, Oh, in the human dragon war from which all hunters have descended. What? But like the section of the book it's in is the bit where it's art that they did not use. So I'm pretty sure it doesn't count as this is the actual backstory of the games. The human but- Human Dragon War sounds like Dark Souls. Yeah, I know. So do Zombie Dragons. <laughs> yeah, all of it does. It's really un Monster Hunter. Did but whenever exactly you go like on... slip a bit of art into the art book and just run away? Well, it's probably from very early in development when they say, weren't yeah. sure how fantasy they were going to go. But if you go on any of the sort of blogs or anything that deal in lore, they're obsessed with this. <laughs> like when the trailer came out for Double Cross and it's got that big robot one. People are like, oh, is, this, is this the dragon weapon? Is it going to be in the games, finally? And it's like, no, guys, calm down. It doesn't exist. But like the idea that there was a previous civilization and they were kind of dicks to all the monsters, I think is... like there's uh, There are bits in the games that mention that. Like, one of the towers is made out of um, Deora parts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, like, 
Bloody hell, I think how many you'd have to hunt. This is hard enough to get some armor, let alone a whole bloody tower. Well, exactly. So, like, uh, within the canon of the game, at least, ancient humans were dickheads. The question is whether, like, people have learned from that and now live in harmony with nature, or are we just still perpetuating the cycle of being dickheads? <laughs> get the impression that they're kind of getting pushed back by the monsters. Like, I'm thinking to For You and... The whole thing with Dundorma, you've got to like protect that town from getting <laughs> wrecked, pretty much. It's constantly under attack from monsters, they constantly have to rebuild it. You get the impression they're kind of. Yeah, you never see any of the like civilizations we see, they're pretty small villages and stuff. So, like, I don't think you could make the argument that you've got to kill a lot of monsters just to survive. Yeah, I so think it's Dundorma's not like. Dundorma's actually like the biggest one that, yeah. any, that we've ever seen in the most normal, like universe. So it's definitely not like humans are, you know, going all over the world, killing creatures here, there and everywhere and industrializing the jungles or whatever. People are just barely scraping out a living in sort of hunter-gatherer societies. Is the reason everyone's so happy in that game just because they've all gone mad? They just don't, <laughs> like this nightmare world that they live in, they've all had just gone insane and ignore it. <laughs> well, they think cats can talk. There is that, yeah. some real problems. <laughs> No, but here's the thing. If cats could talk, it wouldn't be a happy world because cats are dickheads. <laughs> well, what's the... You know, I've just realised I've never really looked into whether there is a difference between felines and melinxes. Oh, one of the characters, um, one of the traders, I can't remember which game it's in, but he wears a jumper over his pattern to hide the fact that he's a melinx because of melinx racism. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't worry, mate. Um... Spoilers, Linians are episode 100. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, it is because the felines are the ones that just sort of live in the villages and they join you in hunts. Mm. And then the melinxes are just like pickpockets and stuff. But they, like, they, do they speak? Oh yeah, no, I suppose if one, of them, if one of them is a trader, then yeah, they must speak. Yeah, presumably they're pretty much the same species. It's just like their society doesn't mix with humans as much. Because they never rob from you uh, in their village. Their shit. No, but they never rob from you when you go to their village. They only rob from you when you're out and about. So That's they the point. Oh, yeah. yeah, that is true. So it is just like a raiding party. Maybe they've just got really sort of strict international waters rules. <laughs> like, as soon as <laughs> yeah. you're out, you can just <laughs> kill whoever you want and take their stuff. They take piracy very seriously. They do. <laughs> I mean, it is a pretty big part of British history that we just used to send people out to be pirates. <laughs> so it's the same part of feline history or sorry mailings history as well yeah I think the mailings is a monster hunter are actually a commentary on 18th century British fair <laughs> policy <laughs> <laughs> that, well that's, that's what I got from it you're quite right you're quite right <laughs> I think that's all there in the text really <laughs> We have gone... I think we covered some of the topic I wanted to cover. I mean, <laughs> considering we didn't even have a description of what it, they were at the start of the episode, <laughs> it feels like we've done well. I mean, if we were just going to go on the in-game text, it's like, yeah, sometimes people decide to be hunters, and they get told to hunt monsters, and they do it. And they're 175 centimetres tall. <laughs> So next week it's uh, back to business as usual as we hunt another monster. Uh, of course, I'd be lying to you if I said we had another big guest lined up. It'll just be us four lads hunting the Teostra. So join us for that. Um, there is a chance that some people have listened to just this one. Um, it's not normally anything like this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, to be fair, it, it was it is a bit like this off-topic chat and. <laughs> But oh. normally we just pick a monster and then spend 20 minutes describing that monster. The design, the in-game mythology, if there is any, and the hunt. Um, so yeah, if you think that sounds good, give it a listen. Subscribe to us on whatever you use to listen to podcasts these days. 
Look us up on Facebook or on Twitter at Monster Mash Pod. Joe, would you take it as an insult if I asked you if you wanted to plug anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm on another podcast called Regular Features and nothing yeah. else. No That's it. it. <laughs> That's a new podcast. Oh, yeah. We're, uh, <laughs> we're, we're young upstarts um, and I was definitely in it from the start. That's why. <laughs> Um, Joe, we normally ask our listeners to tweet something at AndyMan949. What do you think they should tweet at him this week? Um, are you 175 centimetres tall? <laughs> That's a very good, very good question. It's most likely you'll ever get something tweeted at you as well, Andy. <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> oh, on that note, thank you for listening. See ya. Goodbye. Bye. Try to justify their barbarism there, to be totally honest. Definitely. Oh, who just dropped? Joe just dropped, I think. Way banter. Ah, oh, the classic dropout. <laughs> oh. Hello. Hello, that was weird. I have no idea what happened then. We wouldn't be a Joe Scrabbles podcast if you didn't drop. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's that's old school. <laughs> <laughs> the best kind. you <laughs> did. Jay out. We've, we've just killed some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we? Are we in that f- ghost film about Skype? <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Well, my MP3 Skype recorder just died. I think because of Jay leaving. So uh, that, that could be interesting. Oh, good lord. Um, yeah, but in theory, everyone. I mean, that, that's that's only the backup. Working. So that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And Luke's got a backup too. So we We've literally never used the backup since we started making a backup. So, uh, oh, James, uh, James, is totally offline. Ah. My virus is working. <laughs> <laughs> is this it to take to take down all rival podcasts, even the ones that are tiny? <laughs> is this because in two weeks' time your podcast Monster Munch starts? <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. We won't have as good a theme tune, but by God, we won't have any rivals either. Well, my <laughs> my thinking with the theme tune is that if I use it for long enough, if we ever do get asked to stop, it means we finally made it. That's fair. That's totally fair. You right there, Jay? Yes. It's my turn. Just going through all the Js. You're next. <laughs> yeah, I'll be next. Imagine, like... A- a random joins your joins your team and yeah, I'm imagining it. I think he's dropped. You're gonna have a hell of an edit job here, Luke. Do you remember what you were saying before we started, Jay, about how I should keep us on track so that we talk about things? <laughs> it's not really going to plan, is it? It's not happened at all. <laughs> Drops for the year. Oh. Wait, were you saying I've dropped? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yes. I was. It's weird. Like your Skype icon like didn't change, so it looks I could, like you're still in the call. But we, I could, I could literally hear talking. every. I could hear everything you, you said, were saying. You said, "Imagine random joins your game, and then you just stopped." <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we were like, "Yeah, we're imagining it." That's it. Go oh, on. Right. <laughs> Because you ty- that that was timed perfectly with me actually having finished saying what I was saying, and then you were just like, "Yeah, I'm imagining it." I was like, "Cool, let's carry on." <laughs> oh yeah, lads! I looked up 175 centimeters. You said it's your height. Oh uh, yeah, I saw that in the Skype channel like, when I logged in earlier. I'm the height of Hunter, mate. <laughs> I think it's that thing I've talked about before, like five foot seven is short over here, but it's tall in Japan. <laughs>